Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. It is grouting day for this project and I want to talk a little bit about the process that I will be doing. I am going to be using two different colors of grout. For the flowers, I'm going to be using an orangey brown. I really want to distinguish the petals and the pieces a little bit more than what you see here, and that's going to help me do that. And then for the background, I'm going to use Caracolor Black, which I consider a soft black. So it's not a, a deep, deep, dark, true black. It is more of a soft charcoal black. And uh, that's going to do the same thing for the sky. It's going to let me see the shapes of those pieces and give more movement to it. And I want to show you another mosaic that I've done that is sort of helping me make that decision. To Hold see on. the inspiration behind my grouting decisions, I'm moving to my master bathroom and above the garden tub, which I am now standing in, is this mosaic that I made a few years ago called Nymphaea. And it is, that means water lily. And I used a couple different colors of grout. I used the orange in the center here, and I love how it gives it a little bit of a glow. And then I used black and I used gray. So I'm not gonna be using gray, I'm just gonna be using black and orange in the sunflower. And my reason behind that is because I have worked so hard cutting and placing the glass and making the mosaic that I want it to look like a mosaic because otherwise, what is the point? Um, when you step back, it, you can still see that it's an image, but you can see those pieces just a bit. It doesn't distract from it. I think it just enhances it and it's going to be just fine. Not taking away from it, but helping it look more like a mosaic and not taking away from the overall design. So that's my feeling on it. I, I did sort of consider using the, the new grout that a lot of people are using right now that's translucent. But in the end, I decided I wanted that pop of orange uh, contrast against the, the yellow of the petals. And in the center where my petals are more orange, it will, it will just blend a little bit more. And then you'll be able to see the, the streaking in the sky a little bit more from the shapes if I used a dark grout like that. So that's what I will be I'm doing. start with making the orange grout. And I am using bright white that I have just purchased in March of 2022. So a month ago, I got it from Home Depot. It's Poly Blend Plus, and I will be adding colorants, brand colorant to my white to make the color that I want. So I have got sandstone, I have terracotta, and I have yellow. So here's what they look like. They're very earthy. That yellow is not a bright, bright yellow. I'm not sure if I'll be adding this one because it's pretty dark. That's the terracotta. This one looks the most orange. It's the sandstone. So I'll just be mixing bits of these. It's I'm not going for precision here. I'm going for what feels right for me. So uh, I'm hoping to make plenty. I'm making a healthy portion here with quite a bit of water so that I don't have to mix up another one. And let me put on my mask and get out of it. So it's gonna take quite a bit of grout. one a little bit darker orange for the shadowy parts and one a little bit more yellow. They're both orange. I have to let them slate. All right, so I have my two colors of grout that have slaked, one that's a little bit darker and one that's a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to start and you will notice I have not taped anything off and that's because I'm lazy and I'm careful. I don't like taping things off. I plan on just being extremely careful near the edges of the beads and hopefully it won't get in there because I'm going to be super neat, right? Let's see. I also I have two different spreading tools, one for each color so that they don't get too mixed. And again, I like to work with one hand gloved and one clean hand. So let me get started. 
gonna start over here and try to get this one completely done, then move on to this one and then those later. and the rags and this big bead came out. So I'm doing a repair job. I've got E6000 and I'm going to dip it. So I've checked, it fits exactly like that. So I'm just going to dip it and stick it in there. The rest of my cleaning should not be near these beads. It will be out in the sky area. So I think that'll be good to go. Using the non-tape method, of course there are a couple of spaces where the grout will get in that I don't want it. So that is where I want dark grout, not orange, and between the leaves. But for the most part, it's pretty good. I did notice while I was grouting that one of these petals, oh, this one right here, the end of this petal I missed. So I'm gonna go back and put some dark grout in that, dark orange. I'm getting ready to grout the sky and the leaves, and I'm using this Mape Sanded Caracolor Black. Uh, it's another new one that I purchased recently. I'm going to make a good amount, but it doesn't really matter if I, if I run out because I can just mix up more, and it's a consistent color. I'm not putting any colorant in it that's going to change anything. So let me start making that. I grout a little bit on the thick side. So it is pretty thick. It does cling to the spoon. I find it's easier, especially if I'm going to be doing the, the work where I'm going up close to the petals but not going into the petal area. I want to make sure that it's not dripping and when it's a little bit thicker it doesn't drip. It sets up quicker when I do dry grouting too so I can come back in and buff it a little bit quicker than if it was mixed up a little more soupy. So I'm going to start, let this slake and then I'll start grouting the background with that. procrastinated and did not get this frame finished in time for my deadline, which was yesterday. So I had to take photos to submit them to a juried exhibit and I didn't have the frame finished. So I went ahead and grouted and now I'm working on the frame, finishing it, and then I'll have to stick it on the mosaic 
and then I'll have to fix the grout around the edge where it meets. So that's not the way I wanted to do it, but that's the way I'm ending up doing it because I procrastinated and didn't fix this frame yet. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to tackle the frame. I have some Robin Buff in black that I'm going to be using first. That's gonna go in the area next to the sunflowers. And then I picked up three different Robin Buff golds. So I'm going to test them out and see which one I like first. I have one that's called Gold Leaf. I have one that is called Grecian Gold, and the last one is Antique Gold. So before I even open them, I kind of think the Gold Leaf is the one I'm gonna use, but I'll have to see and test them first. And then, so it's gonna be black and then some gold leaf or whatever color gold, and then black on the edge again. So I'm gonna start with the inside, putting that black on, and then I'll tackle the rest. I'll show you how so I do this that. this is what my frame looks like. It has some black and then it has some, I don't know, brownish red and some silver with specks and a little bit of black showing and then black again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this part all black and then I'm going to do some gold over here and then black for the rest. I think I'm gonna just bring the gold down part way, but we'll see. First, I'm gonna get this black on the inside. So it's such a big frame. I haven't taped the whole thing off, but I'm going to do that first. The instructions on the rub and buff are pretty straightforward. It says, apply to most services, polish with cloth, clean with mineral spirits. So that's all. That's what I'm going to be doing. right off and so what I've done is a little test over here where I sanded it down and then I put the rub and buff on and I think maybe my mistake was I didn't let it set up a little bit it needs to dry just a little bit and then you have something to buff rather than wiping it off immediately I don't know but sanding helps so I'm going to go ahead and sand the whole thing I kind of stopped right here I'm just using regular sandpaper sort of getting that silver layer off I guess and then I'll use the rub and buff So close. This one's a little bit deeper and this one's a little bit light, lighter. I like both of them. I think I might go with the Grecian gold though. The one that's a little bit deeper to really bring out the yellow in the sunflowers. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, I've pulled off the tape so I've got to, I'm going to tape off the part that I've already rubbed and buffed and sand this part down. Tape the bottom and then I'll put the gold on. <music> such a beautiful luster to it. The Rub and Buff is an oil and wax based product. So when you buff it, it just has a nice sheen to it that's not too shiny. It's beautiful. Put the sunflower mosaic into the frame. It's gonna have a, a metal brace on the back to hold it in place. 
and then I will repair the edges maybe tomorrow. Here's the finished okay. mosaic. Doesn't that deserve a beautiful frame? I'm about to put it in there now. Just these metal tie plates and these metal strap ties, which are a little bit more sturdy. And I'm just screwing them onto the corners like this to hold the mosaic in place. So these are a little bit stronger. So I'm putting them on the bottom. They only had two in stock. So that's why I bought two of those and two of these. These are a little bit, they have just a slight bit of flex to them. So they're not quite as strong. And then because I have all this metal and everything on the back, I bought some bumpers so that when you hang it on the wall, you don't scratch up your wall. And now I'm just gonna screw everything in place and we'll be good to Using go. number eight, five eighths inch screws because this is quite a thick frame and I don't really need a pilot hole. I can just screw them in place pretty easily. For a minute about the title. So the whole time I was working on it, I was thinking how these flowers were just wild and free and true to themselves. And I really started this before the whole war in the Ukraine, which started on February 24th. And I didn't realize that sunflowers were the national flower of the Ukraine. But in any case, I'm from Kansas and that's the state flower in Kansas. So that's sort of why I was making them to begin with, and then it just tied into current events. And so when I looked up the Ukraine and found out some more information, I found out that they have a motto that is glory to the Ukraine, and I thought that would be a great title. Not glory to the Ukraine, but just glory. So I'm gonna call it glory, that's the title. I'm ready to start laying in the glass for the petals around this gorgeous beaded center that I made last week. This is a commissioned sunflower and the client has asked for some brown and oranges in the center. So it's a little bit different than my other ones, but every sunflower is unique. And so this is awesome. This is leftover glass from my sunflower project. And I have pulled a few shards just to see what they look like. And when I place them around, I think they are all good to go. The colors work nicely. I've got some lighter yellows. And what I noticed right away is that these colors are so matchy matchy. I'm going I'm going to be using them, but I need something that has a little bit more darkness and contrast. And so I have pulled this darker brown that I didn't use before in my other sunflowers and I'll be adding it to the shaded areas around here. I think that will give it some nice contrast. Maybe I'll be putting it in the um, crevices in between just to make those uh, petals stand out a little bit. And then the rest of the colors, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use. So I'll probably be cutting some inventory of all the colors before I get started, and then I can start placing. Have it. To cut these feather cuts, I simply start at an angle and nip 
Nip again, kind of moving directly across from where that bump just was. Nip again, nip again, all the way up. You start at the top and go down if that's more comfortable for you. you flip it over like this and go from top to bottom. Building up an inventory of pieces. That's it. it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.